That's my measure of success. Okay, but it doesn't just end there, that in addition to putting one of these factories on there, they're going to create a whole bunch of biomass. What do you do with that? Well, the advantage of a coal-fired plant is we'll probably keep one boiler on solid fuel, the rest of them will be converted to natural gas. Um, we can then utilize that biomass as a renewable energy feedstock to the boiler to create steam and electricity. Most of these plants also generate um, some level of biogas that can go into there. And then last but not least, you know, all these facilities produce a fair amount of carbon dioxide, and we produce millions of pounds of carbon dioxide as a mission. We are working with two different companies to take that carbon dioxide. One will use it as food for algae, and then the output from the algae is biodiesel or biojet fuel. Another company has proprietary technology that can convert the carbon dioxide through a chemical process into uh, biofuels like isobutanol. So we are working with all those companies, but it just speaks about how this park is integrated. And this is one of the things that makes it one of the unique facilities in the country, that we have all these supporting components and manufacturing capabilities. Um, and the same thing is true, and I'm going to skip this because we're just running out of time. From New Jersey to Rochester's take advantage of our roll-to-roll -roll handling capability and our material deposition, and our scientists here. You know, companies do not come here because they like Kodak's name. They come here because there is a business value to them that is unique, and they can't get it somewhere else. Because, let's be honest, I know many of you probably watch some TV, and you see New York State is open for business. How many of you absolutely believe New York State is open for business and has a business-friendly point? You're the consultant. Right? When they start it it should say pay political yeah. Yeah. on the bottom. When they stop charging on the throughway, uh, that, that will be the same. Mine is when there's the EBP railroad on the <laughs> uh, But we're working on the next generation of solar cells done in the roll to roll. We're working on uh, fuel cells, uh, and then we're working on, you never guessed this coming out of Kodak. We're working on uh, the next means of artificial skin that could come out of this facility. That it's, a, it's a technology we have that you can coat it onto a substrate and then peel it off and you've got artificial skin that could be used. So when you think of functional printing and some of the capabilities that we have, the next generation of products, you can see how we can repurpose this part. Any thoughts about partnering with Corning with their new gorilla glass? Yes. That's all I'll say. <laughs> you know, I will say the tentacles from Eastman Business Park and Kodak reach very far and broad. And particularly to our, our universities within New York State and, and other companies like Corning and Cornell and University of Rochester, Parks and RIT, Alfred. How, how, what, is it, what are the sizes of facilities that you have? See, if someone starts very small and it's a small thing, 
or larger, say, and how much do you charge per square foot or square foot? Yeah. Okay, so um, there's no single fee that I could quote you, but we could take you in the chemical side, we could take you from the beaker up to 1,000 gallon reactors. On the thin film side, we could take you from a 4 inch wide development machine that simulates roll to roll to our 12 inch digital pile coder up to um, our 54, 60 inch wide Corbier coders or curtain coating machines. We could do slot die, uh, rod and blade, and then eventually we hope to put a printing housing in. How do you find out about that? You can, the, the best way is to go to the Eastman Business Park website, which is eastmanbusinesspark.com. Eastman Business Park is all one word. And I'll certainly, I'll leave you, Mike, with some of my business cards. I'll put them on the table over here. You can also contact me directly. Before you address Brian's good question here, my question concerns the, uh, with all the work on batteries and biofuels, wouldn't those business cases be made more cost effective if there was a, a national carbon tax in carbon fuels? And does Kodak have a position on that? A national carbon tax? Well, I have positions on lots of things. I haven't really thought about that one, though. I do believe at some point, Frank, right, that you know, this country, this planet, only has so much carbon. Most of it's in the ground in the form of oil or in our biomass, right? And what we're doing is taking it all out of the solid carbon, burning it, producing it in the air, CO2, that comes out of the air, right? And it's absorbed by our living plant. We have to do something. We have to do something to push renewable fuels. Um, and right now, for the most part, they're not very economical with the exception of ethanol. That's about the only one, but it has federal subsidies. So yes, I think there has to be some way to drive us to a comprehensive plan. And the problem with any type of carbon tax, you need Congress to, to act in a mutually agreeable and consensual fashion. Right. That's, um, we can debate that. Just had to ask this question, and I don't know the productivity, but, but Sweetwater is doing some pretty interesting things in developing alternative fuels. And is there any linkage there? I mean, are you in the same sphere? So not only are we in the same sphere, if you listen to Eyes on the Future Radio at 10 a.m. Saturday morning at 1180, um, I'll be doing a show and talking about the biomaterials and the ruins just on this. The CEO of Sweetwater will be calling in at 1030 uh, to talk about his, his relationship with Eastman Business Park. <laughs> <And> that's it? <laughs> well, you know, I don't want to steal his thunder. Okay. But, uh, but yes, we are very involved with Sweetwater and, and other regional companies who are utilizing the park to produce their okay. bio-based materials. Does uh, Eastman Business Park have any um, arrangement with the state or the national government, and that's how these things work, for a tax advantage for locating that facility? Some sort of you know, high-tech? Innovation center that is tax advantage for a number of years or arrangements like that. And, and if not, is that because those sort of programs don't apply, or what, what's the context for that sort of arrangement, which I think would be very enticing for potential clients? There was a program called Empire Zones, which were, was just that, and Eastern Business Park was part of an Empire Zone. But those programs had sunsetted in the state, uh, and so they replaced them with something called Excelsior Tax Credit which are fully refundable tax credits. So for a new company coming in, we work with them, we work with them with Empire State Development. And so they will get tax credits, uh, they will get sales tax exemptions, and some others from the county through Comida, County of Monroe Industrial Development Agency. So we work with each company coming in uh, to give them a comprehensive package that makes it attractive to be in New York State in the Eastern District. And I think it's important to note, um, for those of you that may be aware, and Brian, you talked about the Finger Lakes Economic Development Council meeting on May 3rd. There's uh, 14 work groups. One of those work groups is Eastman Business Park, and I chair that. Uh, and the reason being is Eastman Business Park for the third year <coughs> is the number one regions, the number one economic development priority for the region. Uh, and so we get a lot of attention, and we, we actually have a shortcut to the highest levels in New York State and Empire State Development to try and get some, some incentives for these companies. Now let me just connect all this. So what is the role for the Rochester Consulting Network? Um, a lot of these companies, and there's now, if you will, 10 startups of the 40 companies that we have on site. Um, and they can't do it all. 
They certainly can't. And so they need you know, consultants that can help them, whether it's applying for a federal grant. Um, and if some of you have expertise in grant writing, um, but you know, they also have technology gaps. Many of these companies want to hire people, but they may not be able to afford them full time. So you know, they may can start at eight, eight hours a week, or 10 hours a week, or 12 hours a week to support them as they continue to develop their product. Um, they're also looking for advice, you know, from people who have done startup businesses in the past, so business mentorship, et cetera. So those are the types of things that they're doing. And, you know, if it's appropriate, we'd be happy to put a link on our website <coughs> to the consulting network, you know. And, and, I, and I don't know what that means, because I've not gone to your website, but certainly put a link to your website. You can, you can contact me, Brian. Do it, and I can get you to do our web person. Great. So to make your folks available. Thanks. Ultimately, as a community, we want these companies to be successful. Sure. And every startup company is cash strapped. They all come to us with great ideas and empty wallets. Right. That's the challenge. Yeah. 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 As a technical consultant, how do I get my name? These companies, my credentials, might be part time. So I, I, again. Um, the more people I know, and if, if, if I have a need, so they come to me sometimes and say, you know somebody who has this expertise. I could then shoot that to Brian. You know, I'd like to have one point of contact, and I don't know who that would be, and then you could post it on your website or wherever. True. That, that would be how it would, mm -hmm. I would handle it, I would suggest. Okay. So, where do you see the long term? What do you, what do you think this is going to look like? 15 years, and what is Kodak? What do you think Kodak's, assuming they come out of bankruptcy successfully, Kodak's role in the Eastman Business Park 15 years from That is a great segue to you know the grand finale here. What will be coming out of there is these products that I just showed you, right? So I'm absolutely convinced there'll be biojet fuel coming out of there, the next generation of biofuels, the next generation of solar cells. Not only will we have in touch panel sensors, but I think the next generation display. We're working with a group called Homotech, Photonics and Optics Manufacturing, will be coming out of the park. I absolutely believe that there will be new renewable energy products or components for batteries and fuel cells if fuel cells ever make it. There's a gentleman who probably knows more about fuel cells than I'll ever know. This will be a thriving industrial park. I, I'll predict we'll have 10,000 people at the park by then. And my goal, as part of the Finger Lakes Council, is to go from 7,000 and add another 1,500 jobs or 1,300 jobs in the next five years. It will be a key industrial site and economic development engine for the region. What about opportunities? So don't bring me down. That was a good finish. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what about opportunities for consultants who are not technical or science or engineering, like myself, I do research, internet research, and types of research. And there, there are other <coughs> consultants in RPCN who are in other areas that <coughs> may not think automatically that uh, you could use our services, but probably could. You know, I, I can't speak for the tenants and what their needs are. Um, I do know many of them come here because it's a scientific or technology-based product. That doesn't mean they don't need services like you. Um, I was at the conference, uh, and one of the things the head of the conference says is quite honestly, he looked out to all the people and said, you guys have great technology, and you suck at marketing. <laughs> <laughs> we are our own worst enemy, so. A uh, group or association where the, the companies who are part of the, in the park, regularly get together, there would be an opportunity, for example, for consultants like us to, to get in, you know, find some way to get in front of a group like that. We, um, last year in December, we did something called Made in America, and we had a conference at Eastman Business Park. Mm -hmm. We will probably do another event um, late summer, early fall. Um, and last year we had over 300 people here. I, would, I will reach out to Brian, and I would say that uh, Rochester Consult, RCN? RPCN. RPCN. RPCN may want to have a table at the event or have a presence there. We're thinking about having some open houses with tenants and we invite some other folks like RPCN to it. So that's something we'll probably do. We're just trying to, get, um, most of my time is being spent right now on Chapter 11 activities. So. Mm -hmm. yeah.
just to confirm that there are opportunities, uh, you have a tenant who just won the uh, uh, business plan contest. Graphene, Rob Anski. Yes. He started his company uh, by himself with, I believe, two if not three consultants for the technical aspects and that type of thing in his business. And I think it's at least two of those people today are his partners. So <coughs> there's a model that uh, can work and is an opportunity for consultants. I'm just... No, I, 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 thank you, you for sharing that. You know, and he is, and quite honestly, you know, our model is, our understanding is for every 10 of these startups that come, you know, in two years, eight of them will probably not still be there. Sure. The, the, you know, it's a very high mortality rate for startups these days, particularly material science. All right, let me see. I don't think I had, uh, I think I covered everything that's new. That's it. I don't want to, I don't want to be sensitive to the time, so. And at first, I appreciate the questions. I appreciate all the comments. Feedback is a gift. <laughs> I, 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 I do believe that, so I hear you, you know, and I understand. Um, but there are, you know, uh, and, and I, uh, let me just leave it at that. I appreciate all the comments. Sure. So thank you very much. Sure, thank you. Well, thank you. Not only for coming out this morning, but for understanding and being patient with, uh, you know, some of our passion. Uh, put it through that way. Uh, I also want to say that I'm really excited. Um, we're standing together. This, for this is what we call a back moment. Yeah, I'm still in this. He's introduced me to photo ops. So, I'm not to him, so. Um, so I, I just want to say I'm really excited because for me, you know, this uh, puts Eastman Business Park in a completely different perspective. Plus, I think there is tremendous opportunity to figure out the opportunity here. I mean, so it's opportunity on top of opportunity. And we'd really like to partner with you in some way. I will definitely be in touch. We should exchange cards. And you, you know, got my stack over there. You know, so we want to make something happen. So thanks so much for well, coming. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you.